Hello friends, welcome to Squared Plans. I'm Stephanie and today we're going to be setting up our horizontal planners for the next week in September. And I've got some washi tapes here ready to go. As well as this label roll that I may use. These scrapbook papers as well that I may use. This rub-on transfer sheet from the Dollar Tree. And these sticker books which I'll pull from. So this is the third week of the September Planable Challenge, and this week's theme is It's Vintage. So if you'd like to participate, go ahead and post your spreads up on Instagram using the hashtag PlanableSeptember2021. We'd love to see what you come up with. Okay, got a fresh sheet here of wax paper ready to go, and we're going to get started. So just a heads up, I am going to be using these rub-on transfers so they take a little bit more time to apply onto the paper. So it's a little bit of a longer video just because of that. But I'll go ahead and get started. I grabbed these older scrapbook papers from my stash. I bought them a long time ago on clearance and just kind of had them there. I thought that vintage look would really come across well with this antiqued style design of this scrap of paper. So I'm just going to rip out a corner of it so it has a nice, I don't know, old feel. And I'm trimming it a little bit so that it fits better into the corner. I don't want it to take up too much space here, so I'm trying to cut it down to where it looks good, but is not encroaching upon the functional space. Something I'm always thinking about, as you guys know, if you follow my channel, I love to do pretty planners, but it's still gotta be a planner for me. I don't just design pages to design pages to look at and not use. I'm always kind of thinking about how much space I have and where I'm gonna be putting down the critical stuff for the day as I design these things. So I have this other smaller scrapbook paper pad that I've had again in my stash for a while and I kind of liked this older, it looks kind of like an old uh, maybe New York city map and I thought that would play well with those rub-on transfers as well. It just kind of gives you a historic looking vintage feel. So I'm playing around with layering those two in the corner. And now I'm busting out the other side here and just trying to get a good balance of layering on this side. I think I'm going to do the warmer orange toned scrapbook paper on the top over here and then layer it behind on the other just so there's some repetition there but you get to see both highlighted scrapbook papers and, and see how they look together. I'm already starting to cut up the rub-on transfers now. I got these from Dollar Tree as I mentioned in the beginning. Really cool. They've been coming out with some really cool designs that I think you can use in your planners. A lot of these can be cut up like you see me doing or you can use them as a full sheet. Some of them are you know designed all together and just kind of lay it down like a background. And the beautiful thing about this is that they're not stickers. So they adhere to the paper, but you can literally put things on top of them. Like I could see, I haven't tried this yet, but I think you could even write on top of them if you really wanted to, because they just kind of lay down like a, like a tattoo onto your paper, which is, you know, really cool and just something different it has a slight transparency to it. So some of it does come through like a washi tape but the texture of the rub-on transfer itself is not slippery in any way. It's almost like a slightly tacky paper. I don't know if that makes sense, but just some ideas there for you guys if you did want to go ahead and try out these rub-on transfers. I'm really starting to get into them and, and see some different ways that they can be used and layered similar to like washi tape with their semi-transparent feel. Just some ideas for you guys to think about if you are trying out the rub-ons. So I've cut up a few of those images from the sheet and I'm just 
creating some clusters around the page. I also have this washi tape that's been in my stash for a long, long time. It's a hard washi to use. I really liked it at first, but it, it's cut up into little sections every, I don't know, inch to two inches. And it flips colors, so it's cute, but it's a little bit, I don't know, it's just not as fluid as I thought it was when I bought it. And I bought a package of different colors and things. So I really like it, but again, there is some drawbacks using it. And I thought that this spread in particular might work well with it. Cause again, that has that vintage feel with the uh, kind of grungy texture of it. And then the warm colors really work, I think well with this vintage feel. I'm also putting in some white diagonal wash tape that I got from Daiso. It's a Japanese dollar store. That place is awesome. If you have one nearby, go check it out. There's lots of planner related items that are like dollar, dollar fifty each. And there's different washi tapes and stickers and things, especially if you like the kind of Japanese kawaii aesthetic. It's really cool. So just playing around with those two different or three different washi tapes I've pulled, kind of mixing them up. I like that orange and red toned washi that I pulled to bring in a little bit more of that vintage color since a lot of the other items aren't really saturated as much with color. Adding in that washi kind of gives a little bump to the color scheme, which I like. So I'm adding that in. And then I had pulled that label roll of circle stickers that I thought I might use for some focus boxes. But when I looked at it, I kind of felt like they were going to be too bold. Now I'm in my botanical sticker book and am looking for some other options in here, see what I have, what I can bring in. I did think that this book was a good match for the vintage feel. It does have kind of that old botanical styling in a lot of the imagery. So I thought I might be able to pull this in, but it was a little bit harder than I thought once I started looking through because the color scheme is a little bit more muted than what I have here on the spread. So it was kind of like, uh, I don't know if I want to bring in more of these softer pastel tones, even though there's a nice strong black, a majority of the other colors are a softer pastel. So I'm kind of just seeing what's there and pulling in a quote or two. Uh, it did just cut out that flower off of that you are a limited edition quote. I thought the limited edition was good because you know vintage is always limited. It's like a one of a kind. So I thought it was a good quote for this spread. Um, but the flower didn't quite match up with what I already had. So I waited on that and just kind of cut it out and just use the quote as is. I also pulled in that white backed butterfly sticker there right under Sunday. That sticker is the only sticker I pulled from the Color Story sticker book. I just remembered I had this random vintage looking butterfly in one of my books and I found it there in the Color Story sticker book that I pulled. It's the only thing I needed from there. So if you are trying to replicate this, you do not need that sticker book. It's just, I wanted to find a place to use that sticker that I remembered in the back of my mind I had somewhere in my stash. So that's why that is there. The rest of it is really built mostly off of the rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree, some random scrapbook paper. You guys could easily pull this off with, you know, any kind of just vintage or old looking scrapbook paper. I did end up pulling my rainbow mega sticker book here so that I could find some other options for focus boxes. And I will probably put that circle sticker that I pulled there on top of the scrapbook papers, but I didn't want to commit to it just yet because of the rub on transfers and all that that has to be applied first. So I have that and I'm looking for another one in the right color scheme but mm, it's not the right book for the colors. I kind of got lucky with the one I found. 
I thought I might pull in that thicker black label circle sticker than now, but again, it felt like it was too bold. So I'm back into the Rainbow Mega Pack sticker book. And now I'm also looking into the botanicals again, just trying to find some other options here. And the way that this weekend quote was written, I thought that might be a good match for this spread. It kind of has an old antique look to it, but I don't know, I just decided against it. Because I was having such a hard time finding a circle sticker that I felt worked, I found this box sticker that I thought I could bring in and use in the upper right hand corner, just as a circle, punching it out with my circle punch. I think that worked out pretty well, especially in this corner because there is that orange overlay of the vintage paper up there. And I thought that, you know, having a white bordered circle works there because it is backed with a different color. So it doesn't get lost in the sea of white on a page. So cut that out. I cut out the specific area where there was more orange floral elements and have placed that up at the top. And now I'm just trying to rework a few things from the rest of that sticker, see if I can incorporate it here onto the spread. Playing around with the stacking here of some of these vintage rub-on stickers up here at the top. Again, I'm also thinking about functionality as I'm placing these clusters need to be able to use each day to its fullest. So trying to make adjustments so I can at least have a checklist each day and then maybe um, a focus area if I can fit it in. I don't have any box stickers or circle stickers to lay in. I'm liking the way this looks, but a few of these clusters look a little sparse. So I'm gonna pull in a few more of those vintage rub-on transfers here, mainly the circles, and bring those in, kind of help that repetition of the boxes and the circles that are on the spread. I'm also gonna cut out a few just elements that look Decorative, maybe pull those in somehow. And I kind of like it there. It gives a little bit more structure. And that one matches, but this is a little bit awkward to incorporate this triangular shape. So we'll see if I can fit it in somewhere. I really like that vintage bingo card, but I don't know, I felt like it really stuck out. So even though I liked it, I thought that's the first thing I would look at. Like, oh, there's a bingo card on the spread. So I waited and saved that for another spread, I think. So I think I have a rough idea of how this is gonna lay out. So I'm going to try not to move stuff around from the wax paper since most of the elements are those rub-on transfers and I don't want them to shift around and I forget how I had them laid out. So I'm going to start by laying in the scrapbook paper and I'm just using my Tombow glue runner for that. I like to do just one side or one area at a time before I commit it. It just makes it easier for laying things down on to the page without getting wrinkles or things getting off from where you want them to be. So I usually just do like a critical area that I need to have glued down and then I go from there and re-glue the rest of the papers or whatever else I'm laying down. Just a tip if you struggle like me sometimes with you know, where you think you're going to lay things down and everything needs to be aligned in certain areas and then you start to do it and then it's off center and you can't pick it back up. That's always kind of annoying. I 
And now I'm rubbing in the first of the transfers, starting with this butterfly, just using the back of my tweezers as kind of like a softer, blunt edge to rub with. You can use anything, honestly, that isn't sharp, just something, even your fingernail will work. I'm just using those tweezers to make it a little bit easier on myself. I also just use my Sakura Jelly Roll Whiteout Pen to cover up the darker dividing line that's there behind the rub-on that I wanted to put down. That worked out really well, just laid that in. Put down the washi tape, goes perfectly over top of those transfers, like I said. It's almost like they're part of the paper, just a little bit tacky, I would say. It doesn't really pick up, but has a little bit of, I don't know, catch to it. It's hard to explain unless you actually see it, but yeah, that's how it kind of goes. <laughs> and I just laid down a circle sticker and it was the wrong one. It was supposed to be the B that's there on the side, of course, because I wanted the color to be on the opposite one. Whatever, I just was in a hurry and didn't think about it. Lay that in. I'm also whiting out some of the section there at the bottom so that, again, it doesn't show through from behind the rub-ons. The basic process for putting on these rub-ons is really just to remove the top sheet after you rub it very carefully. If it doesn't lay down 100% like if you didn't rub hard enough to get things down onto the paper just go slow enough when you pull it up you should be able just to stick it right back down rub a little more and then pick it back up and it should be all set and aligned just take your time with it like I said it doesn't make for longer videos because it's not just sticking stickers down but again you know for a dollar and I still have extras left over and it really created a super cute vintage spread I think it's all worth it And here I decided I didn't want this newspaper to show through from behind the postcard. So I'm going to use a little bit of whiteout tape and my Sakura again, jelly roll whiteout pen for that thin line, just to kind of create a blank canvas behind that postcard. And on this guy, I don't care as much. I don't mind if it's a little bit see-through. So we'll just lay this one straight down. Gonna pull in that washi tape. Again, I like that it adds that little extra bit of color, kind of vibrancy that a lot of the stickers don't really have. I think that really works well to bring some brightness and some color to the spread overall. One thing too to note is that those transfers go right on top of washi tape, right on top of other stickers, so you can layer them however you want. Of course, once you set them down for good, they won't be able to be manipulated, so you got to commit your washi or your stickers first if you're going to lay those rub-on transfers on top of them. And now I'm setting down the bottom corners papers with the rub-ons, trying to get the right alignment here. Again, really thinking about how much space I have to actually use on Thursday down at the bottom. Again, mainly made it smaller because I did need that space for functionality. Wanted to make sure I had enough room for everything I need to do here. Very important. And I'm making some adjustments as far as where the stickers are going to be and the transfers. Go ahead and get started by laying down this long kind of newspaper ad section, which I think is kind of cool looking. And then also here this butterfly.
I follow this Instagrammer named Sky Bambi. She does this really cool vintage, almost like a scrapbooking, but with a vintage feel to it. But it's not like scrapbooking, it's like she's just creating aesthetically pleasing, vintage looking things, if that makes any sense. So I was really inspired by her as far as some of the things that she creates and these stickers definitely feel like her stuff. So if you do like the style, this vintage feel, I recommend checking out her Instagram profile. She really got some cool stuff. I don't follow too many people like that, but sometimes when I come across something and I'm inspired, I definitely will follow and it's not something I do every day, but it's just good to get a range of different things, new perspectives that you can incorporate into your own designs. So you're not just seeing the same thing over and over again. Try different artists, it'll give you a different perspective on your own designs and help you be more creative with how you design things in general. So I have a little hole here that I'm not sure how exactly I want to fill. Thought about bringing in one more of these rub-on transfers, but I'm not in love with that. So maybe I'll bring in some washi tape. Sorry it's so far down on the screen, I didn't realize how far it was from the camera, <laughs> but hopefully you guys can still see what I'm doing. I decided to bring in some washi tape again for some more color and just to help fill that gap that is troubling me right now. And this all kind of stemmed from me picking the wrong circle <laughs> for the right hand side of the page and then kind of cascaded from there. And I'm going to do a little bit of layering here with this vintage window drawing. And there you can see where I picked it up a little too fast. Try not to do that if you're worried about getting down the whole sticker. Go slow and rub more than you think you need to just in case. It comes off pretty well. I mean, I don't feel like I have to do an obscene amount of rubbing, but Sometimes like with thinner lines and things, it's better to rub more than to rub less. Just a heads up. And a layering this other, I don't even know what that is, but this other transfer. And I'm gonna place in this carousel horse, which was originally supposed to go in the bottom and fill that void, but I had to do some shuffling. Finally, I need to add in my checklist. Just trying to pick a good color that will match up that I have in my stash. The oranges are a little bit too red, and I have that like neutral brown, which is not quite orange enough, but I think I'm gonna just work with that. I think it'll tie in with some of the transfers at the bottom. And overall, that is it, you guys. Just gonna make adjustments, like I said, and we will be done. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up down below. Go ahead and leave me a comment if you'd like to get in touch and think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, if you'd like to see more of my videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and we'll see you next time. Bye!